This will be another episode on Christians on YouTube. I'm Clive, and for this episode, I'm going to share with you the afterlife of Saint Gemma Galgani. In her final illness, Gemma's last trials were terrible. Her lungs were deteriorating, and she struggled to breathe. Racked in pain, she repeatedly vomited blood, and the devils attacked her with a dreadful fury. At one point, the devil appeared to her in the form of a serpent and sought to wrap himself about her and choke her. Many were the witnesses to Gemma's extraordinary holiness amidst the trials and struggles of her final illness. Especially present were the members of the large Giannini family who went on doing all what they could in an exemplary way, and also the Barbantini sisters who helped nurse Gemma especially at night. On Wednesday of Holy Week 1903, she received provision for a journey. On Good Friday, she said moaning to Cecilia Giannini, who had helped nursing her until then. Don't leave me until I'm nailed on the cross. I have to be crucified with Jesus. Jesus told me that his children have to be crucified with him. Then she went into a painful ecstasy. She opened her arms and remained motionless till 1.30 in the afternoon. Later on, Cecilia wrote to Father Germano, Look at an image of Christ crucified and you will see her figure. Gemma suffered terribly through Holy Saturday morning. At about 8 in the morning, she was given the sacrament of the sick and provision for a journey. Before midday, Monsignor Volpi was called for. When he arrived, Gemma asked him to exorcise her. However, he refused to satisfy this request because he thought she was already out of consciousness and a prey to delirium. Therefore, he just absolved her. Around this time, Gemma also asked to see her spiritual director, Father Germano, so Cecilia Giannini reminded Gemma that Father Germano was currently in Rome. Gemma answered, I won't ask anything else. I have sacrificed everything to God. Now I am preparing myself to die. A few hours before passing away, she took a crucifix in her hands and said, looking at it, Jesus, you see, I can bear no more. If this is your will, take me with you. Jesus, I recommend my soul to thee. Then she raised her eyes to a picture of the Virgin Mary on the wall opposite and added, My mother, I commit my soul to you. Tell Jesus to have mercy on me. Present were the parish priest, her aunt Elisa, almost all of the Giannini family, and two Barbantini sisters. Gemma then kissed the crucifix that she held in her hands, and then placed it on her chest, and keeping both hands on it, she closed her eyes and remained motionless, as if in prayer. She rested her head on Justina's shoulder. Then she breathed her last serenely and peacefully, with a most beautiful smile and two tears streaming down her face. It was 1.30 in the afternoon on Holy Saturday, April 11, 1903. Father Abbot, the parish priest, had stopped mid-prayer and asked, Is she dead? He later said, I have been present at many deathbeds, but never have I seen anyone die like Gemma, without any precursor sign, not even a panting breath. She died with a smile which remained on her lips, so that I could not convince myself that she was dead. Father Roberto Andrusetti declared, I wanted the emblem of the Passionists to be put on her dress over her breast, because if Gemma had not been a Passionist, as a matter of fact, she had always been such at heart and in her deepest desire. There was a crucifix over her breast, which she had been holding. A rosary was tied round her right wrist. She had her usual black dress on, and a black veil on her head. She was as beautiful as an angel, calm, serene, with the most beautiful smile which remained on her lips. News spread quickly of the death of the girl who was said to be a saint, so that people of all conditions came and saw her, spontaneously beginning a veneration that continues even to this day. Some touched articles of devotion to her, others plucked flowers from her crown and even strands of her hair, which in their veneration they wished to have for a relic. The funeral took place on Easter evening. A crystal pipe, which contained a parchment with Gemma's memoir on it, was enclosed in her coffin together with her body. The venerated body was buried in a privileged grave. It was only then that Father Germano arrived, as Gemma had foretold. In the months and years following Gemma's death, many of the faithful began reporting miracles through her intercession. Father Germanus died only six years after Gemma. However, among the 630 letters found among the personal articles after his death were letters bearing testimonies of numerous miracles attributed to the intercession of Saint Gemma. Here are a few examples. Philomena Bini of Pisa, aged 72, suffered for a long time from malignant stomach disease, pronounced by several physicians to be a malignant cancerous ulceration. Various prescriptions were tried, 
more with the object of lessening pain than with hope of cure. Finally, it was openly declared that any further attempts to cure such a disease in a woman of her age, reduced to such a state, was useless and so medical assistance was discontinued. Meanwhile, the parish priest visited her daily for months and administered to her the last sacraments. In this extremity, a good lady of the city, hearing of Gemma, felt inspired to implore her intercession. Having procured a relic of Gemma, she hastened to the bedside of the dying woman. She made all present kneel, said some prayers to the blessed trinity in honor of the servant of God, and applied the relic to the patient. Almost immediately the sick woman, who for a long time had not closed her eyes owing to the violent pains that tormented her, fell into a placid sleep that lasted the whole night. In the morning, on awakening, she found herself perfectly cured, without the least remnant of the pains that had tormented her for five years. She asked for food and ate with appetite four times that day, taking broth, meat, biscuits, milk, and eggs. Imagine the astonishment of the doctor when Philomena Bini, whom he believed to dying, presented herself to him in robust health. Not trusting to what he saw, he wished to examine her with electric rays, and finding that all the cancerous disease had gone, he exclaimed, This is a miracle wrought by God. Many months have passed since that miracle, and Philomena Bini continues to be in good health, such as she had not previously enjoyed for many years. Also, Lena Serafini of the Capelago, near Luca, was suffering for ten months from acute meningitis that tormented her night and day, without her deriving any benefit from the remedies ordered by her medical physicians. From December 1906 to October 1907, she was unable to sleep for more than an hour in each 24 hours due to the dreadful pains. While in this sad state, she felt inspired to have recourse to Gemma and invoked her with confidence, saying, I shall take it as a sign that you are in paradise and a saint if you effect my cure, and I promise to publish it immediately. So saying, she lay down on her bed. Miraculously, the pains left at the very same moment. Not a vestige remained of the violent and painful meningitis. She fell asleep, and from that day, the 10th of October 1907, she has not suffered once from her head and is always able to sleep soundly. Regarding the numerous graces and miracles of which he was receiving, Father Germanus wrote, these wonderful cures, taken from among many that are happening continually in Luca Rome and in every part of Italy, as well as in other countries, will be enough for my purpose, which is to edify the faithful and encourage them in their corporal sufferings to apply with lively faith to the powerful advocate given us by heaven. Well, that will be all for the video this time. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and as ever, I hope all of us listening to this video can learn a lot from the life of the saints. Anyway, again, thank you, and please don't forget to subscribe for more future videos like this.